Hello, this is Roland Kühn from Cooler, and I will now present you the first test results of our double lift concept for adsorption refrigerators for high ambient temperatures. I am starting with a motivation, then I will show you the system setup and the results from the test rig. In the end, I will conclude and give an outlook. One dollar in investment in effective vaccination generates more than sixteen dollar economic benefit in the global south. But most vaccines must be cooled, and cooling is normally enabled by electricity. But around 1 billion people worldwide do not have any access to electricity, and even more do not have stable access to electricity. Additionally, in 2016, only 2% of off-grid dispensaries and hospitals in the Global South had sufficient cooling capacities, and around 20% do not have any cooling capabilities. So, 78% of all vaccines in the Global South are at risk of damage by insufficient cooling, either by freezing vaccines or by vaccines becoming too warm. So, there is an important growing market for off-grid cooling technologies, which is driven by local health authorities and NGOs like UNICEF. The WHO certifies cooling technologies and lists them in a performance quality and safety catalog. The requirements from the WHO for off-grid refrigerators are as follows. The cold room temperature must stay between 2 and 8 degrees C, so waxings must not freeze but also must not become too warm. The tests are performed at constant ambient temperatures, 27 degrees for moderate climate zones, 32 degrees C for temperate climate zones and 43 degree for hot climate zones. The focus today will be on the hot climate zone. The holdover time must be at least three days. The holdover time is defined as the time where the cold room temperature stays below 10 degrees C without any energy input to the refrigerator. Additionally, the refrigerator must be installable in a lockable room, so it must not stand outside. The certification for 43 degree ambient temperature is recommended by the WHO for all cooling technologies. The state of the art are photovoltaic refrigerators without batteries, so called solar direct drive refrigerators. There, the PV panel is directly connected to the refrigerator. But the dimensioning of the PV system is crucial for sufficient operation because when it's too big, vaccines might freeze. But if it's too small, the cold storage might not freeze at day so that the vaccines will become too warm in the night. One alternative are solar thermal cooling solutions. They utilize the solar energy more efficient because the solar thermal collector can harvest also diffusive solar irradiation at cloudy days. There is an inherent freeze protection if water is used as refrigerant because it freezes at zero degrees C. But in the prior state of the art, there were high temperature fluctuations. No freeze protection because methanol was used as refrigerant. Operation was only possible outside because the adsorbent was located directly in the solar collector and the operation temperatures for sufficient cooling were below 30 degrees C ambient temperature. So in the past, Cooler developed and tested an adsorption refrigerator for 32 degree ambient temperatures, which was controlled by the day-night cycle. So regeneration takes place at day when the sun is shining and cold is produced during the night hours. But for 43 degree ambient temperature, a more complex system is necessary and this is the aim of the presentation. Here you can get an idea how a typical off-grid health facility looks like. Now I will show you the internal setup of the test ring. So we have the cooling compartment of the refrigerator here with an evaporator. We have two internal sensors, one at the top and one at the bottom part of the cooling compartment and we have three temperature sensors on the surface of the evaporator on the bottom part in the middle and on the top part and in the single lift mode both adsorbers are operated as one adsorber so 
during adsorption both adsorbers are cooled and water vapor from the evaporator flows to both adsorbers. Then during regeneration both adsorbers are heated and the water vapor flows to the condenser where it is condensed and the water flows back to the evaporator. So there is no continuous cooling as it's operated like a one chamber system. In double lift mode we have an extra step during adsorption and regeneration. So only adsorber 1 adsorbs from the evaporator and is cooled. Then in the next step adsorber 1 is heated and adsorber 2 is cooled so that a lift of the water vapor from adsorber 1 to adsorber 2 is done. And then adsorber 2 is heated and releases its water vapor to the condenser and the condensed water flows back to the evaporator. We use a real refrigerator housing on a flexible test rig. Regeneration is done with hot water from an electric heater at 105 degrees C. The climate chamber is used for constant ambient temperatures, e.g. at 32 degrees C or 43 degrees C. And there is no cold storage used in the test shown here. In the test rig we use smaller adsorbers than in the prototypes. So in the prototypes we have 24 hours day-night cycles and approximately 8 hours for regeneration. But in the test rig with the smaller adsorbers we uh, have cycle times of approximately 6 hours and regeneration is done in 2 hours. Coming to the first test results, we can see here the temperature of the cooling compartment and the evaporator here. Um, the black lines are for double lift and the gray ones for single lift. We can see that in double lift operation the minimum evaporator temperature is approximately 2 Kelvin lower than for the single lift operation mode. Um, but at maximum temperature the temperature difference is much smaller. We can see that we have quite high temperature fluctuations. On the evaporator side it's approximately 7 Kelvin. In the cooling compartment it's around 4 Kelvin during regeneration. So now we will have a closer look to the cooling capacity. We will have a look on the intermediate cycle here. So we can see when cooling starts, so adsorption starts, that the cooling capacity in the double lift operation increases a bit faster than for the single lift operation mode. But the maximum cooling capacity is equal for both operation modes. During adsorption, the cooling capacity decreases as it's normal for adsorption cooling machines and double lift and single lift is more or less equal. So then regeneration starts, so the adsorbers are heated, so the cooling capacity drops. For the single lift mode, water is condensed in the condenser and the water is recirculated to the evaporator, so the cooling capacity becomes negative here. In the double lift mode, we have the lift here, so there's no water condensed in the condenser, so the cooling capacity is approximately zero. And the condensation takes place in the second part of the regeneration, um, so that there the cooling capacity becomes negative also in the double lift operation mode. And then adsorption starts again. So due to the higher cooling capacity in the beginning, we can see here that the evaporator temperature decreases faster for the double lift operation mode than for the single lift operation mode. But in the second part where the cooling capacity is more or less equal, we can also see that the temperature in, on the evaporator increases a bit faster than in the single lift operation mode due to the higher temperature difference to the ambience, the heat losses of the cooling compartment are higher so the temperature increases. Then during regeneration, as stated before, we have a negative cooling capacity, so the evaporator temperature increases a bit faster for the single lift operation mode here, because the cooling capacity is negative. And in the second part of regeneration, it's vice versa, so the internal temperatures of the double lift operated refrigerator increase a bit faster than for the single lift. So all in all, the cooling capacity provided by the double lift, so the area here, is 
higher than for the single lift operation mode and the internal heat losses are smaller for the double lift mode so that we achieve the lower evaporator temperatures here and also cooling compartment temperatures. At last we will have a look on the pressures in the adsorbers. So here regeneration starts, the pressure increases. For the double lift system the pressure is lower than for the single lift operation because here the water vapor is released from adsorber 1 to adsorber 2. And in the next step adsorber 2 is heated so the pressure rises so that now the adsorber 2 can release water vapor to the condenser. We can see that the pressure of the adsorber 2 in the double lift operation mode is slightly higher than a single lift mode because there is more water adsorbed in the adsorber 2 than in single lift operation so that more water vapor is released and the pressure in the condenser is higher. And we can see now when adsorption starts or when regeneration is finished that the pressure in the adsorber drops. We can see here the most significant difference because in double lift operation mode the Adsorber pressure decreases much faster than in the single lift mode, so that the evaporator pressure is reached faster, so that cooling is enabled earlier with what we have seen in the cooling capacities before. But although the pressure is much lower in the double lift operation mode, the maximum cooling capacity is the same as for single lift operation, so that the cooling capacity seems to be restricted by heat transfer constraints. So we have shown a single lift and double lift operation on one test rig. We reached 8 degree evaporator temperature at 43 degree ambient temperature, uh, what is necessary to be in line with the WHO requirements. On double lift mode we reached 6 degree C, so 2 Kelvin less than in single lift operation. But the maximum cooling capacity seems to be restricted by heat transfer constraints. Otherwise, we would expect a greater difference. So with improved heat exchanger designs, there will be hopefully a much more significant difference between both operation modes. Recently, we finished the prototype for the double lift adsorption refrigerator for off-grid use. And we will do climate chamber tests and field tests in the next month in a joint project which is funded by the European Union. We will show you the results next year. Until then, let's change the way of cooling.